you can give it as community building. Um, So this is just a few details about me. Um, so Faith's already given me an introduction, so thank you for that. Uh, I don't have to do any of that work. Uh, here's a few ways to keep in touch with me as well as with our ladies, Johannesburg. And I first want to say a big congratulations because it is a lot of effort goes into actually starting and to actually getting this off the ground and you've taken the first step, and that's the best step you're gonna take now. Okay, so then I think we've also already talked a bit about this, is about our numbers and about what's, where we've been. So we've held our first meetup actually in 2018, in July, and we've held 23 events thus far. And we've had 492 yes RSVPs but you'll see there's a disclaimer there. So even though it's around 492 yes RSVPs, about only two thirds of the people actually featured. So technically it looks like we had 21 attendees per meter, but we're actually almost about 14 per meter. Um, and our online meetups are actually doing much better. We have surpassed 20 attendees since we have been in lockdown and been on online meetups, uh, which was since April. So we've had four, four thus far um, since April, and all of them have been very well attended. Okay, I think my first piece of advice is um, we're, we must remember that we're in Africa. The meetup culture is not as big as in Europe and it's not as big as it is in the United States. Um, I think they have a very mature meetup culture and they've been doing this for a long time. So don't worry about your numbers and don't compare yourself to other people. If, for me, you have to pick a number and be comfortable if you get at least that many people in the meetup. Um, I initially thought if I get like seven or eight people, that's good enough for me. Um, I know you've eventually grown to about 20 people per meter. Um, and that's kind of double my expectation. So I think it's a tick and a win for me. Um, you can see the recent ones, we've had quite a bit of people actually joining. And the meetup attendance when it's online is more, um, it's more well attended as well as more people pitch up. So it's more than actually the two thirds that we have for an actual physical meetup. So I guess people are lazy to drive after work. Okay, and then some things about our logistics. So we've had monthly meetups and we try and keep to at least 10 a year. So with the exception being December and January. So sometimes in December, what we do is a social. So we have like, um, we one, one year we watched the, I don't know if you've seen the computers, it's a documentary. It's a very short film, it's like 20 minutes. Um, but it's about six women coders for the ENIAC, the ENIAC machine. Um, and that was quite a nice social way to end up the year. Uh, we also had, um, uh, and the R, uh, R Studio Con watch party to start off the year this year. So that was quite cool. Um, and we've also kept it to only women speakers, except for Colin Fay, um, who is, they both came, both Heather Turner and Colin Fay came for Sat R Day and we um, had them join speaking. Uh, there's a reason for that. We are set up to promote gender diversity within our community. So we're very deliberate in keeping the leadership as well as trying to keep the speakers to be women or minority genders. Um, 
And also, we like to think that we set the stage at our first meetup, that we we put it in our, like almost in our kind of our code of conduct, that we want it to be a welcoming and um, a warm space for people to feel welcome. Um, so that doesn't mean that we, we not only going to be attendees, uh, minority genders or women, we can, everyone can attend. It's just that we're trying to promote minority gender and women. Um, so some ways that you can get involved, um, you can sign up to be a curator at We Are Our Ladies. That's quite a nice way to actually, um, it, it's, it's hard work, but it's a lot of fun. And it's also um, a good way to get the word of Africa R and what we're doing in Africa out there into the world. Because um, uh, I think we're often, we're not given enough credit because we come from Africa. But I think there's lots of smart people here and we can teach people a lot of things about R as well as about science, data science. Um, so we have a lot to offer the world. And then also watch out for the Africa R users uh, handle. So watch out from there, because we are actually gonna launch a curatorship for African people. Um, then things like giving a talk. I feel nervous as well, I'm nervous now. Um, I, I have serious social anxiety, so I know it's it's uh, often uncomfortable to put yourself out there and give a talk, but you won't find a better place than an our ladies meetup. And I'm not saying that because I'm biased, I am a bit biased as well, but I think it's a warm space. It's also, you'll be surprised because you'll find a lot of mentors here. So you'll find that if you're nervous, you can probably bounce it that you talk off one of the, the founders as maybe even one of your friends in the community that you're making here, right? And that's a good way to put yourself out there because it's a very safe environment. You know the people in this community and then it's a nice launch pad for later on when you want to speak at bigger conferences or you want to just dip your toe further away from this community. Um, other ways are also once normality resumes. One of the biggest things as an organizer that I struggled with in the initial parts was a venue. Because for me, I worked at the bank and they weren't actually willing to sponsor a venue because they have strict access control um, and it was a big problem for them. Uh, luckily, we eventually, my co-founder was in uh, Ritz University, so we used you know, the university as a meetup space, and that kind of got us launched. Uh, the other thing is catering, because we have our meetups in the evening, so we have it after work, um, and people are usually traveling straight from work. So we get pizza, and we get some juice, and then people can mingle a bit, and then we go in for our talk or session or tutorial. Um, so if you're in a position that you have a company who can sponsor that, or you know people who can sponsor some uh, funding, um, that's always appreciated as an organizer. And there's also other ways. I mean, um, like if you want to speak, yes, but there's also other little things that you could do to become more involved in the community. It's not, the organizers are not selfish. They don't want to keep this all for themselves. They actually want people to embrace it. Okay. Yeah, so this is some of the highlights, I feel. Uh, exposure to a wider community of like-minded like people. Um, it, it feels comfortable. It feels um, like, it feels very, uh, much like home. I feel at home at our ladies. Um, and I like that, that I feel comfortable there. And I hope that my community feels comfortable. Uh, it's a great way to build knowledge and expertise. Because it's like a free, 
like a free lesson, right? Because usually we are doing either a talk, like you get something out of the talk, or it's a tutorial. So you have some hour and a half of actually hands-on coding something in R. And so definitely we build knowledge and expertise. You'll find that it gives you exposure to bigger parts of the community. So you'll be invited to like chair sessions, um, talk. I actually talked on um, at Sat R Day. Um, Danielle Navarro was going to speak, but she was actually not feeling well. And she, um, so they put together a panel at the last minute to talk about like ethics and data science. So at Sat R Day in 2019, I actually uh, sat on the panel and they asked me like the day before. So that gives you that exposure. You make new lifelong friends. That's really cool. Um, you can and make lifelong friends in other parts of the community. Like I met Shell through basically getting involved with our ladies. And I'm actually now within Africa R. I feel very welcome because of all of that. It's like a knock-on effect. Uh, you can collaborate on projects also get a job. So we've actually hired people and I personally, my company has hired someone from our ladies. Um, but also whenever we get like a job spec or we hear about something, if the company is um, comfortable with it, we post a link to say, hey, somebody is looking for new hires. So they're looking for specific skills in R or even in data science in general, because um, I, I think it's it's a stepping stone. It doesn't need to be only R, it can be Python or whatever, but people know that you can do data science and now you get a foot in the door that way. Uh, then there's other things like a, a lot of times we have discussions about sensitive things that are hard to discuss. Like it's hard to discuss sometimes with your colleagues, like negotiating the salary um, and like having kind of tough conversations, um, dealing with that conflict. And I feel that that's also a testament to our ladies being a safe space and a welcoming space that we can have that kind of conversations. Um, so Dr. Heather Turner, she's one of the mentors of Africa R. She has this wonderful article, and I really think it's a must read. Um, so it's a link on here that you can look at later on. Here's some things that we personally need to get better at, and I think the list is longer. I only started my slides yesterday, so forgive me. Um, but one of the things is to actively seek feedback. And I think that's kind of scary to do. Um, it's scary to give feedback and it's scary to get feedback. But we are building a diverse community. So we need to kind of collect that feedback from the community. And we haven't been very good at that. Um, the second thing is we've also not been very good about spreading the word of our meetups and our organization. So we see very few men actually attend our meetups. And even from a work perspective, I will say we're having a meetup next week, but all the guys actually never pitch up. I think they just get scared away by our ladies. Um, and, and every post that I post, I say all genders are welcome. Um, but I still see we have much more women than we have men. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing because it's the women feel more comfortable, I think, speaking and, and uh, talking up in that environment. Um, but it's not like we're, we don't want to prevent men from attending. We actually want a diverse community with everyone to feel comfortable amongst each other. Um, then the other thing is that we haven't had women and minority genders approach us about speaking. So one of the things I, I said was, how do you get involved? Like, you know, like, talk to the organizers about giving, us, giving a talk yourself or doing a session. Um, but we've actually had no one come up to us and say, hey, I'd like to give a talk on this. I've always had to do the work to approach people to say, hey, don't you want to do a talk for us on 
specific topic that they're interested in or kind of get to know them and know that, hey, they are very good at spatial stats. Maybe they can give us a talk about spatial stats. Um, so then there's a lot of work actually on the organizer side. So we have to get better at that, that they're more comfortable to say, hey, I'd like to give a talk. Um, okay, and then just thanks for having me and best of luck. Um, so I just have some thank yous to, um, I should disclaimer that the slides are from Alison Hill's beautiful sites and the stats that I pulled for all our meetups is from an actual Our Ladies maintained package, which is Meetup Our Ladies. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Vibash. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I think even for us, when we posted about uh, Our Ladies Nairobi Lounge, we had some uh, men asking us, is it just for ladies? And I, I really want to make this clear that everyone, every gender is really welcome to these meetups. Please don't feel like you're left out. The only thing that uh, our ladies uh, does is to promote the diversity. So as much as possible, they always recommend the organizers to be either ladies or members of minority groups and the speakers. But you, you're welcome to come, you're welcome to contribute, you're welcome to yeah, to be part of our discussions and help us grow. If you know or, of any lady or any member of any minority group would be an awesome speaker, or you are one, please reach out to us. Our last slide will be on our links, but also on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on our email, on our meetup, please reach us to us. Because we may not know everyone who is doing an amazing job with R and at different levels. So please, please reach out to us uh, because People need to know what you're doing. We need to grow our network. We need to grow our skill sets. And if you're out there and we don't know you, because the four of us may not know you, you may not be in our inner circle, please reach out to us. Um, uh, and that, so I'm going to be introducing uh, Paloma. Uh, Paloma will be our next, uh, our next speaker. Um, she is an organizer of uh, our ladies. I, I hope Paloma, you're, you're able to share your screen. So just a brief introduction of who Paloma is. Uh, Paloma holds a graduate degree specialization in statistics for health science, a master's degree in clinical research, and she's currently a PhD student at the epidemiology department uh, of Erasmus MC. Her research is focused on applying casual inference methods in cohort studies, specifically to emulate target trials for long-term exposures related to dementia and to understand the role of competing events in this setting. Uh, she's an organizer of Our Ladies uh, Rotterdam. She's a certified art studio instructor. Our Ladies uh, Rotterdam was created in December 2017. It has 448 members and have successfully had 13 events since its inspection. So welcome, welcome so much, uh, Loma. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I am very excited to be part of this launch event. I really appreciate uh, that you invited me to share this with, uh, with you. And as v, uh, Vibash said, uh, I think also that the first step that is starting is a really hard one. So that you already made that step is uh, amazing. And I thought today that I would share a bit uh, my experience as an Our Lady organizer, um, but actually this story is a bit older. So I, I thought it would be uh, fun to share a bit how many things happen like in a domino effect. Um, so uh, a bit about myself, I am from La Paz, Bolivia, that it's a country in the middle or in the heart of South America. And I actually studied medicine. Uh, and this was the first time that I went to the uh, surgical room uh, and I was super scared, uh, but I think I felt more scared when I first coded in R. <laughs> And when I lived in Bolivia, I did not know what R was. In medicine, we didn't have much of statistics. So I never did anything with the statistics before I left my country. And then I moved to Buenos Aires, Argentina, 
And in Argentina, I did my master in clinical research, and that's the first time that I started to really put my hands on data. And one day, um, because I had a friend from Bolivia that was a friend from Mine uh, Dogoju, who was an or former Our Ladies Columbus organizer, uh, she was visiting South America, and my friend thought that it would be nice if we meet each other. So Mina stayed with me in Buenos Aires, and Mina was the first woman I ever met who had a PhD in statistics. So far, I had only met men uh, that were uh, statisticians, and that blew my mind. And Mina was so uh, encouraging uh, for me to pursue doing statistics. And only in a few days, Mina changed my, um, I think, my life. And why I'm telling you this? Because then Mina and Laura Sion, that you know, because she's part of the Our Ladies leadership, uh, the global leadership team, she was, um, she was my teacher in statistics. So Laura was the second woman I met who was a biostatistician. And, um, and with Laura, we became very friends. So at one point, I put her in touch with Mine Dogoku, and Mine pushed Laura to start Our, Our Ladies in Buenos Aires. And Laura told me, okay, if we're gonna do this, we have to do it together. But at that point, I was not comfortable coding in R at all. Um, but Laura said, it doesn't matter. Uh, we will learn together over time. And that's how Laura and I uh, founded Our Ladies Buenos Aires. And the, when we started launching the event, Danny Vasquez, who was from Uruguay, also reached out because of Meetup, and she said that she also wanted to be involved. And so the three of us uh, founded and launched the first event of Our Ladies Buenos Aires. And we had, um, uh, we shared the story because it, it's much funnier now, uh, that is in the blog of Our Ladies, uh, that is called Vacation Grow Our Ladies Network, because the thing is that uh, Buenos Aires was the first active chapter in South America. And as soon as it started, then it triggered so many other chapters in South America started to open. Uh, and that Laura was so passionate and active to help other chapters in South America start and launch. So we say that just because Mine was couch surfing in Buenos Aires, then that led to a domino effect where many women uh, got in touch and we spread our ladies world all over the world. Um, so in Our Ladies Buenos Aires, I learned a lot about what friendship and sorority means. Um, because I, I was an immigrant and I was very scared of uh, learning statistics. Many of my uh, colleagues in the hospital would tell me that I was losing my time learning statistics and that I should focus on the hospital. Um, but then in Our Ladies, I met a lot of amazing women that were programmers and were doing amazing stuff in statistics. And that gave me the courage to uh, pursue my dream, even if I wasn't sure what that was going to be like. Um, so I think that overall within the community, uh, I learned that it's so important that as women or as minorities, we help each other. Uh, and we push each other um, up. And that also is not, so, and in the same place, I met friends. So I, my closest friends now are on the other side of the world, but we are always in touch. And also that within our ladies, you might not be the best friends, but you feel sorority, it's, as friendship, but does not mean that it's the same. So you don't need to be a friend to uh, 
support another woman. That's what I wanted to say. And um, in Our Ladies Buenos Aires, it grew a lot. At the beginning, in our launching event, we were around 10. And in I invited my sister <laughs> and any other woman I met that even if they didn't know our but because we were so afraid no one would come. But by the end of the first year, we were over 100, I think. And that's a picture of the uh, of our first anniversary. And that required a lot of organization and a lot of uh, teamwork. For example, I wasn't good at contacting people or finding sponsors for venues. Laura was more outgoing and extrovert and she had like really good social skills on that. Uh, I was more focused on the um, social, well, it's contradictory, but like on social networks, just like posting stuff and uh, sending the, the surveys to everyone and was more in the uh, backside of what the organization was. And I think we, we made a lot of progress because we communicated well. So we were always open about what were our best skills, what were we afraid of, um, how hard it was to launch Our Ladies because we also received a lot of negative feedback, mostly from men when we started. But overall, this, um, this made us stronger. And it was within Our Ladies that I gave my first R steps. So not just running scripts, but actually running my own code. And I think that uh, within Our Ladies, I embraced feminism and I understood what sorority was. And I think that this is one of the things that made Our Ladies Buenos Aires or that you can really feel in many chapters of South America. And especially, I think it's because we connect in another level because we really had to face a lot of negative feedback from men. Because I think, yeah, in South America, there was m more of a pushback on why are women gathering to program. But that made us stronger, like discussing these things and keeping each other together really made us stronger. And that's where we found friendship and sorority. Um, and then after one year of being an Our Lady Buenos Aires organizer, I moved to Rotterdam to start my PhD in epidemiology. And um, so what I learned there is that little things are big. So we do have a big number of members in our meetup events, but our um, meetups were always small so around 12 to 15 i think our top was 20 once but whenever the feedback that we always got was that because it was a small everyone got to know each other and we got to share more um on the breaks because you would talk with everyone and that that really made like um that really made the place like feel safe and comfortable to learn or share insecurities about coding, et cetera. Um, that compared to a larger event where you sit and you follow the code and maybe you chat with who is next to you, but um, you don't have the chance to meet all the diversity of people who join the event. So I, I think that you don't need to feel bad if the, if your if your events are small, I think that it's nice to embrace the the particularities of having a small group because you can get more connected and you can learn from each other even in more deeper ways than when it's a larger event. Um, and I also learned that one size doesn't fit all. So I had already the experience of Our Ladies Buenos Aires and I thought that it would just be that in that the aims and the motivations we shared in Buenos Aires were going to be similar to the motivations of women in the Netherlands joining the meetup events. And I realized that it's not because the culture is very different as well. 
So you need to adapt also to your local um, diversity and the, in your own culture. So as Vibash said, you don't need to compare yourself with other meetup events or with other Our Ladies chapters because um, it's whatever happens in your own local community is unique and you have to embrace that and you have to feel uh, very powerful of this uniqueness that you have. Um, and last, uh, I, uh, so during my PhD, I got too excited with programming in R, so uh, I also had to host some of the events, and those were the first times that I, uh, I made workshops for our ladies. Um, and I also became an R-Studio certified trainer, and that was a big accomplishment that it's also thanks to the R ladies I met or that are my friends um, and that Janina, I think you've heard her, um, we studied together. So that was very powerful for me. Um, and now this year, I think that um, the good, so I don't, it's a very, we're in a very hard situation, but the good thing is that now there are no borders or visa needed. So it's really nice to, uh, be visiting Nairobi without a visa because also a Bolivian passport is really hard. <laughs> I cannot go anywhere with my Bolivian passport. Um, and there are many other ways where that you can get uh, involved in the Our Ladies community. So one thing that this um, year I had the chance to work with, um, with Janina in the International Women's Day, it's a project that it's done once per year. And um, there is this account and we built um, a lot of tweets to represent uh, our ladies chapters from all over the world. So this year we scrapped the information from the GitHub repository of our ladies. And then uh, based on the titles of the workshops, we, feel we, we made all the themes and then we started uh, we made a bot that would share um, every 10 minutes a new tweet uh, showing one of the workshops of a specific Our Ladies chapter, and we would promote that. And based on that, Janina built a shiny app where you can see all the workshops that have been developed by Our Ladies. So it's easier than going to the GitHub repository because otherwise you have to go inside each folder. And now you can just like go through the Shiny app, click ggplot, and you will see all the materials that have been developed. And that is nice because we can all um, develop more. You don't need to start from scratch. And maybe that is something that you can also mention to new speakers that they don't need to like do everything from zero. They can always recycle and update uh, workshops that have been done in the past. Um, the other thing that we did this year was the Our Ladies Netherlands Book Club, but actually this is open to anyone uh, where the time zone uh, fits. So actually, I'm, you, you are all more than welcome to join. Uh, we are reading the Advanced R um, book by Hadley Wickham, and we meet every two weeks. And what we are doing is rotating so each chapter is hosted by a different Our Ladies Netherlands chapter. Uh, so uh, we rotate and this is a way that we can keep our chapters active because otherwise it would be harder um, for many of us given the current situation. Um, and this has been a really nice. We are always around 15 individuals, uh, participants, and we are already in chapter 10. But you can always catch up, and I think that the chapters are self-contained, so you can always learn, even if you haven't read the previous chapters. And last, it, uh, this year was a big opportunity to make the first event hosted by, um, that was in Spanish, but hosted by Our Ladies Global. So we made an event on how to make a virtual event uh, without dying while trying. 
and this was co-hosted by all the or at least by 15 chapters from South America um, and I think that at least I feel my heart really close to um, my country and um, Buenos Aires as well so it's really nice to be able to participate in things that are where yeah I feel close to other chapters so personally I found friends who I admire a lot, who understand my struggles and insecurities, and who have supported me a lot in Our Ladies. And I realized that we are agents of change, but not just within your city. Whatever you do in your city can like grow exponentially without noticing, just as um, how when Buenos Aires started, and then it triggered almost all South America to begin. And as Vibash said also, um, there is so much potential in the global south that we really need to embrace it. And we really need to uh, make this gap between the north and the south narrower, but by showing and developing a lot more um, and showing to the world what the global south is capable of. And I think that this is something that we really need to embrace and work forward to that. Um, and as an organizer, I learned that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go, um, yeah, you, you know this proverb. If, <laughs> if you want to go far, then go together. Um, and yes, it's very different when you share um, with people you, you feel close to and especially when it's not just like yeah when it's also in your job or in your field because your job should be many people are passionate about their job so being able to find a passion for whatever you're doing um, with a group then can lead things even farther and last that um, sharing is caring so um, yeah I think that's it <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Loma, for that. Uh, we're really glad that you, you highlighted all those points to even hear about your journey. I think uh, everyone should know that uh, no one is perfect. That you can't say that you're the greatest gig in R. You don't know. You, you can't learn any new tricks. Like, even people who have worked in R for five years, they're just small tricks in R or to just change things because R is very dynamic. We have uh, new packages and new ideas of doing things coming from every direction because it's open source. So we should really uh, be ready to mingle, to network with people, to share what you know, you know, to grow ourselves, grow our skills as uh, individuals, make new friends, uh, just know who, who is doing what out there. Because maybe you're developing a shiny app in this way, and then there's a new way of adding a, a track somewhere, and then it looks uh, amazing. So please, please, uh, this platform is to promote the diversity, to make everyone feel comfortable, to make everyone want to learn new skills, you know, mingle with people, and also really expand your network. Uh, also, in case you have any job postings, uh, job opportunities you have, uh, feel free to tag us on Twitter or LinkedIn or even share with us so that we can uh, really circulate it out there so that people can know uh, if there are new job opportunities uh, out there. So thank you so much, uh, Paloma. Uh, Paloma is also a certified arts instructor. So maybe Paloma, you can talk around uh, just what does that mean? What's the process of getting there? You know, how did you get there? How much time did it take you? Uh, must you be a very advanced user to be certified? Just, yeah, maybe you can just highlight that uh, for um, participants. Uh, yes, of course. So um, I think for um, regarding the preparation, um, going through the R for Data Science book was really important. And I had done that to learn R, but it was good to reread the book and make notes. And I also learned, like every time I read that book, I learn new details about it. <laughs> and um, so 
this was a process um, and I was lucky I could share this with other friends that were that were preparing for the certification. So we, we had a chance to uh, talk about like uh, problems with that found in each chapter or um, or give different solutions to the exercises. Um, and I think that what I learned the most that really changed how I do things now is that I've been always passionate about teaching, but um, no one really, or at least I didn't have a formal training on teaching statistics or teaching programming. And with the certification, um, you have a two-day training um, about how to teach programming um, that is really, really good. So then I really understood of putting myself in the shoes of the students I will have and develop their learning persona before, um, I, before I draft my workshop. Um, and building concept maps so you don't overload uh, people with the information you would want to give them. That sometimes less is better because uh, at least they will grasp the core concepts. So making those, these choices of if I can't give all that, what am I going to um, focus on? Um, and that feedback is also very important and the, the, the formative so that Whenever you are giving a workshop, don't just talk by yourself. Always make, um, like, interact with your students because the feedback you get from your students can help you um, reassess the speed in which you're going with your workshop. Because at the end, you really want your students to get the best out of this class. But so you get, you really need to be connected with your students. So with this, making small questions every five minutes or like very frequently can help you um, improve the pace. And that definitely makes um, things better. And I think that I've given a few workshops and I, and I get way better feedback about it, but it's still a learning process. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lama, for that. So uh, I've shared the link to the R uh, for Data Science book that she's talking about. It's a really great resource in case you have not heard about it. Uh, it's online, it's free, it's very self-explanatory. You can go through it alone or you can uh, go it through uh, uh, with a friend. So feel free to, to do that. So uh, after that, uh, we are going for a very short break of five minutes uh, just for a breather and also for the new uh, for the people who have joined us uh, when we had already started to uh, introduce themselves in the chat ask questions you can ask uh, the Bash and Paloma questions uh, uh, in, on the chat that is type anything there we are going to respond they are going to monitor themselves and also for uh, us uh, introduce yourself and also share any resources you feel like uh, we should uh, uh, know about is existed today so Thank you so much. So it's just a five minute break. Uh, let's ask questions. We'll be back uh, at 1215. Uh, Paloma, I have a question. Which is the biggest lesson um, you've learned while leading the Our Ladies group? Um, what didn't you anticipate and it got you by like unawares and you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> um, and you wish someone else would have told you, um, I don't know, maybe things we should think about this early. Um, so that we organize ourselves. That is... No pressure. <laughs> uh, 
so one i guess a few things is one keep in mind that people come from different backgrounds so even if you have statistics or like data in common that it's still good to know that people come from different uh, places so, and that whenever you give a talk you need to um, consider that because people might not uh, know if you are talking on a specific field and like using specific terms of the field then at least you need to be sure that you're gonna translate that in uh, other words or be sure that everyone is following the pace. Um, and the other is that it's um, on future events, if you can, if you can make smaller groups, um, some icebreakers or people, yeah, the more you make icebreakers or that others can talk and interact, then um, if, especially now that it's virtually, then that helps on making it more uh, personal, I think, or uh, you get more, um, yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. Oh. Any other question from uh, our audience, if you have a question to our speakers, please feel free to ask, also to us. Uh, I can see Henry there. So maybe you should say hi. Tell us if you're feeling very comfortable in this community. I hope you are. Um, You're most welcome, Nish. Nish. I've also shared um, resources, um, more resources that is uh, that are on the Africa R website for people who want to learn more about R. It contains a lot of books and resources and links um if you're in the spatial world um if you're just a normal data analyst like myself if you're like a biostatistician there's something for everyone but then again if you know of a link of or a resource um that is not part of that list please feel free to throw it my way so that we can include it um in the in the list. Uh, thank you so much, Jill. Uh, I can see a question from uh, user generator. Hello, why do you call yourself Hard Ladies Nairobi? Do you include uh, Nairobi ladies? Uh, I'm new, so I uh, welcome uh, uh, to this launch today. Uh, we had uh, just talked about that. So, uh, Hard Ladies Nairobi does not just include uh, ladies. It includes everyone. Everyone is most welcome to be part of the community, any gender or anyone. Uh, only that we're just trying to improve uh, diversity in the R community. And we are under the umbrella of R Ladies Global. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with R Ladies Global, uh, which has been in existence for four years now and has, has really worked towards improving the diversity in the R community. And therefore it's it's always uh, emphasized that uh, the organizers and also the speakers should uh, be ladies or members of minority groups. But anyone is uh, very welcome to be part of this group. I hope I have answered your question, Jerita. I think also to add on to that, um, um, laying emphasis on the Nairobi part, our ladies' chapters are built on cities. So we felt we come up with um, Nairobi first, but that does not mean that we can only have one our, our ladies in Kenya. So we are happy to help people based in Kisumu or 
Yeri or Machakos, anywhere. And an our ladies group can even have two or three people. It doesn't matter if you feel in your community or in your campus, um, in your city, there are people who are interested in uh, working with R and they believe in the Our Ladies Global Agenda and they're ready to go through the code of conduct, which is something um, we'll be talking about later. Um, it, by all means, we will help you guys um, come up with a group. So right now things are easy because we, we are now living in a virtual world. But um, when we go back to physical interactions and physical meetups, people based in Kisumu will not be able to visit Nairobi that often, you know, um, for a two hour meetup. So we can always have more uh, groups in different cities. Okay, thank you. I think uh, we are going to continue. Uh, it's 12 16, so I'll break it, I shall break it over. But feel free to type in the chat anytime you you want, and the question will be addressed uh, during the, the, the meeting or towards the end of it. So, Maggie is going to take us through the other section of, uh, of, of this launch. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Faith. Um, hello, everyone. We are really glad uh, that you um, are here for the launch. Um, we cannot wait to share this uh, journey together. And uh, thank you for coming. So um, I'm pleased to introduce Shelmi Karaoke. Um, she is. She will be sharing with us her journey in R. Um, Shelmi is a BSc Actuarial Science graduate from Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, that's JQuat, and um, also holds a master's degree in applied statistics. She is a senior data analyst and uh, also an R Studio certified Tidyverse trainer. Shelmi also is a co organizer of Africa R and uh, Nairobi R. Um, her recent projects actually include a uh, creation of the R Kenya Census Package, which contains the 2019 Kenya Population and Housing. Census. So um, please welcome, uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Shelmi Karaoke. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much for the kind introduction. I hope I'm audible enough. Please confirm. Uh, yes, you are. Okay, thank you. So I'm really happy to be part of this group and I'm happy to have helped. Um, maybe a small disclaimer, as much as the slides say I'm an organizer, I think I am I am just a helper. <laughs> the main organizers are Lucy, um, Faith and Maggie, and they've really done a good job. And um, I, I'm, I'm very excited about the future. So for those who don't know me, my name is Shalmith, as you've heard. Um, again, I co-organize Nairobi R and Africa R. Um, we came up with Nairobi R with the idea of training Kenyans on how to use R. Um, and also creating a community where people who already used R will come together and teach each other um, new things. We had a few meetups last year. Um, you can check us out on Nair uh, hashtag Nairobi R on LinkedIn and Twitter. And you can also look at some of our past videos on AI Kenya uh, Facebook page. We worked with AI Kenya uh, at the beginning of Nairobi R. I'm also proud to be amongst the leadership uh, team of Africa R together with the Bashing and other people. We, well, the whole idea of Africa R was to bring Africans together who use R again with Nairobi R as as the same as Nairobi R but on a continental uh, scale. Um, and we've, I think we've we've been doing well. Um, we really we brought out people like we've. We've identified people in Africa who use R, and we've also helped other people who do not know R to start learning. Um, and we are good. So amongst Africa R, we have different R user groups, of which Nairobi R is one. We have several in Southern Africa. We have some in Western with West Africa, and North Africa. Um, to learn more about the group, just go check out at Africa R users um, on Twitter. 
but also I have shared a link of resources. You can look at the homepage to know more about us. Yeah, so I was invited today to talk about my journey in R. I started learning R in, I think, 2010 in JQuart. Um, I did doctoral science, so we used to have units called statistical programming that were using um, R. And um, at that time, it was just very, very basic R, like carrying out mathematical operations, um, such stuff and it was good then i graduated joint masters i was able to um, assist my supervisor then who was teaching r i was able to assist him lecture so what would happen is i would he would give theory or lecture stuff at the uh, at the front and then i will be at the back just going through people's um, work because we were learning in a lab to see um, where people were stuck and help out. So from that, I started getting very interested in learning um, more about R. But then one time, and this I think is where my change came, um, there was one student who was really frustrated with um, R. I think he found it very hard and he wanted, he had questions he needed um, me to help him answer. So when he approached me, I remember we sat down somewhere and one thing he asked me was like, why do people have to teach us these hard things? Where will they help us with life? And that to me was where my life began. Um, I, I, you know, as a lecturer, you'll put on a very brave face and be like, these things are very important. Like you never know. But then when I went back to my room, and this is a story I give everyone, I was like, but wait, that guy, he really asked a genuine question. Um, how will we use R out there? Um, so I, I, I got very interested um, and I Googled, I took my phone and Googled how to use R to solve Kenyan problems. Um, and and I, was, I was intrigued. I just, on the internet, there, was, there were so many people who had done their thesis using R um, in Kenya and beyond. I landed on a um, website called Data Science Central by one guy called Vincent. He used to post blogs about our stuff and i would go through his blogs um every day i'll be like wow there's actually more to uh, more to r than i knew so that led me to twitter and that's when i um interacted with people um in the r stats community and all that but i hadn't i didn't really know about r stats at that point so I started learning R um, step by step, blah, blah, blah. Then after some months, I realized academia was not for me. Um, and I started looking for jobs um, in the corporate world. So what I will do, uh, I will wake up in the morning. I was still living with my parents. Wake up in the morning, uh, decide today I'm going to learn something. Today I'm going to learn how to create a graph in R. Um, so I'll go look for data in the internet, um, have... I don't know, and that's when, I think when I was graduating my master's in 2015, that's when I heard about our studio. I've never heard about our studio before. And I think that's the same time it, it, it was um, released. I'm not sure, uh, because before we were using the normal R um, ID. Yeah, so I, I started working on small, small things, small, small projects. And as I did that, I realized there's more to R that is interesting and these things are doable. So when I started looking for a job, I, I, I knew, I, I kind of knew what I wanted to do. Um, a lot of failures for job seekers, you know, like most of the time you're going to apply for jobs and you might not hear back from those people, which is still okay. Um, but then I, I got, I, I saw an advert by Busara um, and they were looking for a data analyst and I decided to apply. You know, sometimes you're told just apply and forget and just like don't put all your hopes there just in case things don't work out. So I did that. Um, and luckily those days I never used to check my emails a lot. So one time it was just a lazy afternoon. I remember my mom was cooking chapels. Um, <laughs> And I just decided to check on uh, to check my emails, and that's when I saw the first data task. 
um, they had sent me a data task. I was like, wow, oh my God. Uh, but then the tricky part was the questions that were on that data task. I was like, ah, where do I start? And I remember I Googled from the word go. They will tell me, um, take this data set, create a variable that does this. And I'm like, I will go to Google, how do I create a variable? Um, then they're like, the second question will be like, um, create a data set that only contains females who are blah, 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 blah. How do I drop, you know, like I Googled the whole, ex I, I call it the whole exam. Um, and eventually I came up with something and they had given me three, was it three days to work on it? And I was frustrated because I thought um, Googling is wrong. You know, I thought if I have to Google this much, it means that I'm not ready for, for a corporate job. Um, so I, I did my best and sent my work and but then I was very pessimistic I was like I don't think I'll I, I don't think the, I don't think I'm the person they need because how can they google all this uh, but then I was like okay if it doesn't work out I'm happy because I know what the world needs I know what um, is out there I know what I'm expected to learn um, <laughs> So I, I, I just said, uh, I told my parents I've done my best. Um, if, 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 it, if, if they come back to me, it's okay. If they reject me, it's still okay. I'll be ready for the next one. And I started learning, but also at the same time, um, I had heard about Python. I, I went on Facebook and saw a guy whose page was statistical programming. And I was like, wow. And he would post stuff to do with graphs, blah, blah, blah. And I just DM'd him. I'm like, I really like your page, blah, blah, blah. Then he told me to come to Nairobi. We have a chat. And I remember we sat down in one of those. Um, we sat down in, sorry. Um, sorry, sorry. Sorry for the distractions. We sat down in one of these cheap places places in town and he told me how he'd been learning python how he'd done stuff with r so i remember when i was going home um i passed through jquat and i had a flash disk i took a python um what do you call it python software in my flash and went home so i started learning and i also started learning stata because i read busara they used stata so for me it was a whole learning process, and i was not sure like where i would land but two weeks after, they sent me another email. They're like, hi, congratulations on passing the first data task. Here's the second. I'm like, oh, my God. I wish they knew I Googled. But anyway, the end justified the means. So the second data task, now I knew uh, this Googling thing is working for me. So every question, Google, Google. But at least I had already learned some stuff. And also from school, I had learned things such as reading in data, writing data, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, so I did a second data task and this time I finished this task like one day earlier. So, and then I was like, cause they, they had asked if you, if, like it was okay if anyone used R, Python or Stata. So what I did, I, I did, um, I did my task in R and then I had one extra day. <laughs> I did the task in Python also and sent both <laughs> in my head. Of, I was like, let me. Um, let me show them that I, I can do both R and Python. Anyway, I sent the second task. I wasn't able to answer all the questions and I left one question. I was like, you know what? It was a question asking how to calculate the distance between geo places, like given coordinates. I never knew that. And I sent, and I don't know why I felt good about myself with this one. Um, so one time I was, I was lecturing, I was in class and they called and they're like, hi, we really like your task. We are inviting you for uh, an in-person interview. I was like, hey, Shalvit, you're making it. So <laughs> I went for the in-person interview. And this is one of the things I'm going to be talking about. Once you Google, make, do not Google blindly. Like, it's like if someone gives you a more Kenya sometimes, or if you're writing a more Kenya, I don't advocate for this, especially being a lecturer in the past. Um, I, sorry, just give me a minute. There's someone who wants to join. Just a minute. 
give me a minute. Um, oh, I think maybe, I don't know, people missed the registration or they are, it's okay. Yeah, so I, I walked in and the first thing they, sorry, we can see your screen, someone. We can see your screen. I don't know whether it's Maggie or it's Lucy or it's Faith. We can see your Twitter. Um, so I I walked in and they started asking me questions on the data task and like the, the few codes I had written. And I was so ready. I remember I remember Googling stuff like mutate, blah blah blah. In the interview I was so ready and I I think one of the things I'm able to do is um, in Kiswahili, we call it kujitetea. What do you call it in English? Um, I don't know. What do you call it in English? Okay, I don't know what to, which one to say, uh, to use. But anyway, I, I pleaded my case. Um, I told them why they needed me, blah, blah, blah. And I went home. Um, again, I'm, I'm very pessimistic about Kenyan uh, interviews, especially because you know, the, the idea that um, this uh, interview is just a formality, there's someone who already has this photo, blah, blah, blah. So I was also not optimistic at all. But one time they called me, they're like, hi, so congratulations, we've given you the job. I was like, wow, thank God for Google. Yes, so I started working um, and I, I remember I had some esteem issues, not really esteem, like, what do you call it? Um, what do you call it? I've forgotten the word where you feel um ah, i'll remember it so i i i started working i was so scared uh, imposter syndrome yeah imposter syndrome because remember i had been googling uh, through the task and and i joined busara like deep dive being given data to work on um but what helped me is being real being truthful and telling them I have been learning a lot on my own, but I've not had a chance to actually work on real data. So um, I will need help, but I promise that I will also do my best to learn. So what is to happen is at night I will learn a lot because at that point they were using Stata a lot. So I will teach myself Stata, but also I was determined to use R to, I was determined to use R to um, just do analysis. And, and we grew, and I grew in that role. I was in a very amazing team. Um, we taught each other, we helped each other. We, we could um, learn stuff. Now that's when I, I came to know about our stats. So I could check what people have posted on Twitter. Uh, that's when I, I, like some months down the line, I got to know about Shiny and I approached my boss and told, and told her, oh my God, have you heard of Shiny dashboards? I think this is something we can learn and actually pitch to clients. Um, she asked me to come up with a prototype. I did the next Monday. We started a go we started learning Shiny. Like we, we, we gave ourselves a goal of learning Shiny in like two weeks. Um, and, and, and we grew, we used a lot of Tidyverse. Um, we used a lot of, our markdown scripts to re, um, report our work. We learned how to create functions to make our analysis code faster. We learned how to write good codes. Like the whole journey was um, amazing. It was really amazing. Yeah, and that's how I grew. Most And most importantly for me, I always thank Twitter and Google because I, I taught myself a lot. And that's one thing I would encourage people. You may be in a team where uh, people are still doing things the old way um, or the same way and you feel there's a change. There's no, like, just sitting down and wishing is not enough. Sometimes what I tell people is if you think something needs to change, go create a prototype and come and show people. You know, like, if you, if, especially when working with our markdown, the fact that you'll be able to combine your you'll be able to combine your code and your output and documentation all together. Um, it's better than sending a folder of graphs, then sending a script, then sending a word document, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so that's how my journey had been. And, and through that, I realized that I needed to also teach people 
because no one had taught me per se google had helped me and the internet right now we are living in an age where at least a lot of us have access to the internet and we wouldn't even need heavy uh data so that's when we decided to come up with nairobi r and africa r um right now i'm meant to be joining a very awesome company i won't mention it before because i'm right now because i've not yet signed the contract but sometimes r can lead you to good places um and it can i don't know it, it for me it has it has helped me in life so i hope i hope especially for the beginners amongst us i hope it also um helps you get an amazing job so i wanted to talk about um that's a bit of my history i wanted to talk about a, a few things um i always advise people when they're starting out in r or when they are in like in the like already using r um <clears throat> for beginners first of all i have to tell you that you have to know why you want to use r in the first place um because there's a whole lot of hype going out uh, like happening especially if you're on twitter like sometimes you can be very confused you know like you don't know what to do. do you start with machine learning deep learning ai data analytics blah 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 like where do you start first of all you have to know what you want to do with your life um career wise what did you study uh what do you want to do um in your life so for me i'm very comfortable being a data analyst because there are very many problems in kenya that can be sorted with data analysis um as maggie mentioned when she was introducing me i sat down and thought this census data could help someone it's published in pdfs what can i do to make this data accessible and i used r to scrap the data um i scrapped the data i cleaned it i organized it in a way that will be friendly i packaged it in an r package i created a shiny dashboard which is an r thing um that um that um displays date, the data in excel sx or csv format so you can download it in either of the formats and now i'm also working on something still based on that data to see how um to just track the sdgs how kenya is doing with sdgs and it's it's amazing i should be releasing it maybe on tomorrow or monday um and it's it's been all r like how can you use r to help your mama mboga out here you know um how can you use r to help safaricom or any other company and most of this is majorly at least at the beginning data analytics so businesses sometimes want to know what the data is telling them and what the data is telling them is data analytics and r is very good at um data manipulation and it's at this point where i'll mention r versus python in my meetups i rarely talk about r versus python because i feel as though it's usually like uh, uh, uh like pythonistas um some pythonistas would want to uh, make r seem like it's it's something small it's not it depends with what you want and that's what i tell people we don't we are not forcing people to learn r no if you feel you want to learn python by the please do please do um but for those especially those of us who did starts in school um r is just amazing when it comes to analytics and statistical stuff r is also being used for machine learning and so when you go to twitter i know in the data science space um ask yourself do you really want to be a machine learning engineer do you really want to be an ai person is is that what and are you just doing that because everyone else is preaching about that especially for me there are things i say to myself i won't bother i won't mention them right now i'm like i can't do all which is we can't you can't do all um you have to be specific the second thing i want to tell you people is working on pet projects is really important i i used to tell someone if you want to put shell me then someone else together someone who's an expert and shell me is not been an expert the thing that shell me did is once she learned that 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 i will shout i will tell people hey by the way do you know 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 and that's just analogous like i will create something small like a graph with different colors and put it on github you know um those are some of the things i call pet project when i worked on the census data for me it was also a pet project pet project is something you do as a learning um 
goal. You don't, like no one is paying you to do that. And it's at the end, you get to learn stuff. And also you get to show the world what you can do because for a potential employer, especially if I was an employer, I hope I'll reach that point and I want to um, employ someone, I would sometimes our, we, we all, most of us have certificates, that's fine. But how, how do I know that you're going to actually do the work that I want you to do? Um, and, and that can only be seen through GitHub or GitLab or Bitba, any version control system. Um, like we just, I just want to see your code. I, I want to see what you've done before especially in cases where people don't have much time to teach other people. You know, some projects are very fast, you know? If you get a project right now and I want someone to help me uh, scrap this data, maybe it's from YouTube or whatever. Like if you have a project or if you have a script online saying, um, um, like I, I, I scrapped data from YouTube for a certain lovely channel that I love, you know, it's something, something small for you, I'll be like, ah, if you scrapped from this channel, then we can work with you. So that's what I encourage people. Anything small you do, just post it on GitHub or GitLab, whatever. You never know, like employers, that's what they are looking for, not just certificates. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, Google, but do not Google blindly. Um, you, you, you don't want to face, a, you don't want to come to a situation where you've Googled, you've written code, and then I'll come or someone else will come and ask you, oh, so what does this do? You know, like, what does this option, what does this argument uh, take care of? And you're like, ah, actually, I don't know. Uh, I Googled. I'm like, fine, we all Google, but you need to understand. And that's how you learn. We have learned a lot from Google. Me, I won't even lie. If there was a PhD in Googling, I would be a mastermind because I Google a lot. Um, and that's how I've grown in the space. But then you need to Google blindly. Uh, you need to Google, you need to Google well to avoid Googling blindly. I've also find, found myself in situations where I've Googled blindly. And I find myself Googling the same thing over and over again. But for other for other situations where I really sat, sat down to understand the code, it, it gets fixed like in your head. So you never have to Google um, again. Also, I don't want to advise you people to follow people in the community. Um, I remember Vebash one time was an art ladies curator, which I hope it's something I'm going to talk about soon, um, if I remember. And she posted something uh, to, like her whole week was amazing. She was posting stuff to do with um, tricks in our studio. And I looked at that and I didn't know Vebash at that time. I was like, wow, you want to tell me you can do this, you can do that, you can do that. Twitter is the best learning ground for R. Um, it's, it, it, could, it might not be friendly for beginners, but if you've used R for some time and you just want to learn more, um, Twitter is a very good space. The whole RStats community is on Twitter using the hashtag RStats that I think I'm going to I think I'm going to just put on the chat right now. Um, sorry. Uh, to everyone. Sorry. Forgive me. Um, hashtag R stats. You can check that. Um, many developers, package developers, trainers, um, students, everyone is on Twitter. So people are always posting stuff. And one time I will be here seated down eating or even watching a movie and just log on Twitter and see someone having posted something and I'm like, ah. <gasps> Like in R, you will never, like we will never reach a point where we are experts because there's always something new. Um, and it, it's usually such an amazing uh, place to just get information. Also, um, we need to normalize training others. I know there are people who have a different personality where they think training others reduces information. Actually, it doesn't. God has a way, sorry, I'm a believer, God has a way of rewarding efforts. Um, and when you train people, um, 
you become better at it. You become better at that content. I always tell people, if you want to know whether you've understood something, train it. At first, it's going to be scary, but once the training is done and you get good feedback for, from people, you'll have to killed to budget one soon. One, you'll, have, you'll know that you're already good at that content, and two, you will help someone get skilled. Like, imagine you train someone and then they get their first job. To me, it melts my heart. And most of these trainings we do, we don't charge um, at all because I was also not charged to be taught. <laughs> Okay, I was charged by Google because I think I had to buy bundles, but you get the point. Like sometimes you have to um, be willing to train and you don't have to train a large group. Like you can even train your friends. You can just insist on explaining something to your friends. Paloma talked about book clubs. There are a lot of book clubs that have come up during this um, corona season and I'm so happy. Like um, I joined a book club again for advanced R. Um, it's been led by a group called R for Data Science, and you think you know R until you looked at the ad you look at the advanced R book, and you're like, "Wow, R can get very complicated, and it, it's a bit scary." But we are going to uh, we are going to get there. Then um, again, as I said, if you if you're working at a place and your boss is very open to change, you can suggest things. Um, for example, if you guys have been doing something um, and you feel it's very repetitive, you can learn how to uh, automate your work, which is something R is very good at, very, very good at. Um, you can learn things like cron job, uh, task scheduling. You can learn how to create reports using our markdown. You can learn how to create amazing dashboards. You can learn how to create websites. Um, just, just, I think the only way we are going to change the statistics or data analytics narrative in Kenya is if we try one by one. You know, if one person in a certain company introduces something in R in their company, um, that will be good. Now they'll be looking for um, uh, potential what do you call it? job applicants who can do that specific thing. That's what I, t I used to tell the other Nairobi R organizers. Like we are going to change the R narrative in Kenya step by step, Ndogo Ndogo too. And I think we are um, we are doing our best. Again, Rome was not built in one day. So make your learning gradual, like step by step. Um, try and learn small, small things that will help you in life. Learn something, um, look for data, work on data there's a lot there are a lot of data sets on the internet learn some learn how to create a graph using ggplot2 uh, take data from somewhere create two graphs post that on github trust me when someone looks at your github profile you 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 will you will look as though you're an expert because by the way you're always an expert to someone who doesn't know someone something I realized is sometimes I would sit down here and be like, wow, there are things I don't know. I don't think I'm that good. But then someone else will look at my work and they're like, wow, shall we, you girl, you're such an expert. I'm like, imagine, no. So the little you know, someone else does not know. So we, we just need to show the world um, what we can do. So I, I want to speak about curation. Um, our ladies global have a curation system where every week, um, a lady is picked from some application. You have to apply. A lady is picked to, to talk about R um, on Twitter. And I remember I saw Maggie, who is one of the organizers of this um, chapter. She was a curator and I was like, oh my God, someone from Kenya. And it was, it was, it was such an exciting week. And she posted stuff and I was like, wow. And one time I traveled for the Use R event and I talked to some people and they were like, you also need to sign up for curation. But I remember asking myself, like, really? Like, do I have things I want to tell? Like, I, I'm sure whatever I know, everyone else knows. But then when I started curation, people were intrigued. And I remember I got a lot of attention from people. Um, and there's something I posted, which was something small to me. And I remember the chief data scientist of our studio hardly retweeted 
and I could not keep calm. I was visiting my parents and I was like, oh my God, he retweeted. And it was such a beautiful thing. So it's all about sharing your knowledge. You never know. Whatever you think is small, someone else. And I remember during the curation, um, my curation week, I would post something which to me has been like, duh, like this is how these things are done. And professors and like all those big people will be like, wow, I've been using R for quite a long time and I've never known that it does this. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, are you sure you're not just saying that to make me happy? Um, but that's the thing. So I would encourage uh, ladies here, if, you're, um, if, if you, you use R, um, sign up for the curation. I think I'll share the um, Google Doc where you can sign up and can just talk about, as long as you're talking about R and you're following the code of conduct, by all means, um, feel, feel free to apply. We will, we will really, really psych you up. Um, I think that's it from my end. I don't, I don't think there's anything else I, I wanted to talk about. Feel free to ask me questions um, on the chat, but that's all from me. Thank you very much, Shelmis. Um, your talk was very inspiring. Um, and uh, because of time, if you have any questions for Shelmis, please post them on the chat and we will go forth to the next uh, slide, which was to discuss the results of the pre-launch survey. So um, as you can see, we requested you to fill in a pre-launch survey. We just wanted to tailor the chapter to your needs. And um, we got 42 responses. Um, and some of the questions we asked you was, um, ever, have you ever heard of a ladies global or any a ladies group? So 53.7% um, of you said yes, while 46.3% of you said no. So that's sort of like a 50-50 uh, balance. So we hope that uh, those of you who said no after this launch will have a different answer. And we look forward to more uh, people in the community and even people outside the community who'd like to join to be um, aware that, uh, of our Ladies Global and what uh, their mission and vision is. We also asked you whether you'd be interested in participating in our Ladies Nairobi meetups. 95% um, of you said yes, which is a very positive uh, outlook. 2% uh, of you said no, 2% of you said maybe. So um, we look forward to uh, working the journey together um, and um, collaborating more with you. We also asked you to rate your programming skills. So um, as you can see from the chat, most of you rated uh, yourselves as a three. That's sort of like uh, an in-between, a between a beginner and an advanced. So um, uh, as our ladies in Nairobi, we, we are working towards um, uh, changing uh, this sort of narrative. We hope that um, even if there's a beginner uh, uh, at this launch at the moment, uh, that after some of our sessions, you'll have uh, probably more confidence in rating yourself um, at a higher score in terms of your R usage. So this is just giving us a, a, a scope of like um, the people who are uh, registered for the survey are uh, rated themselves. We also asked you to uh, share your aspects of your work or everyday activities that you use or need R for. Um, as you can see from the word cloud, um, the biggest, uh, the word that appears the biggest is the word that was used uh, the most. So obviously uh, we see data, we see learning, we see visualization, presentation, learning, analytics, which is also very impressive. We also see some of you even say Tidy Tuesday, so um, which is also uh, really nice. If you'd like to know more about uh, Tidy Tuesday, you can just check it out on Twitter. Yes, um, some of you even said reports, finance. So uh, it's good to see that most of you use R for diverse kind of works and activities. Um, and we are really happy about that. We also asked um, about the frequency of the uh, Ladies Nairobi meetup sessions, uh, as in like how frequently would you like the sessions to be held? 67.6% uh, of you said monthly. 18.9% uh, of you said once in two months, 10.8% um, of you said once in three months, Well, uh, the small percentage uh, shown in green said uh, biannually. So um, 
actually going forward um, as, of, as of now, we shall be holding meetup sessions uh, every month, uh, the first uh, Saturday of every month. So we look forward uh, to seeing you RSVP for our future sessions. We also asked um, what general topics you'd like to learn about. So as you can see from the bar chart, 24.4%, um, which is the majority of you, said uh, data manipulation in R, while 22% of you said shiny app development, going all the way to, uh, I need multiple options here to 2.4%. So we really don't know what that multiple options mean. Uh, probably you um, want to learn something that we did not list. Uh, so we are open to, uh, just getting an overview of your opinions. Um, some of you even said I'm open to learning all I can on R, which is also very, very nice. So um, something to mention here is um, we have uh, tailored, we meant it when we said we will tailor these topics to your needs. So um, interestingly, the next uh, meetup session is on data manipulation in R which is going to happen on September 5th. It's already public, so we hope to see more of you RSVP. And um, this other sessions after the data manipulation in R will be shiny app development. So um, we listen to our, we listened to you, yes, and we hope to see more of you in our meetup sessions. We also asked about any other topics you'd like to learn about. So um, as you can see from our word cloud is that data again, is the biggest. So most of you just said uh, data learning. Uh, some of you said geospatial, machine. I'm sure machine is a combination of machine and learning, machine learning, visualization. Some of you said Bayesian. Some of you said packages, artificial intelligence. So um, this is really nice. And we hope to tailor uh, our future sessions to your topics. Um, we also asked on your thoughts on making planning and execution of the meetups more accommodative and effective. So um, interestingly, um, most of you, most of your um, responses were based on the sessions, sessions, the meetings, the time of the meetings. As you can see, we even have someone who already, uh, someone who suggested, I don't know if it meant 8 a.m. past or before anyway, but anyway, some of you even said 6 p.m. Some of you said interactive sessions. Um, some of you said uh, flexible. I'm, I'm sure that is in the line of flexible sessions, contribution. Yeah, so you can just have an overview of your responses um, in this word cloud. Um, and uh, we, the final question was on the expectations for our ladies Nairobi. So as you can see, um, which is very also interesting and nice is that the biggest word is learn, skills and networking. So this is what you expect to get from our ladies Nairobi to learn, uh, gain skills, networking, knowledge, opportunities, growth, um, people, I'm sure that means uh, meeting new people and probably mentors, I see mentor next to people. So yeah, so you can just have an overview of um, expectations. And now we also have um, expectations from uh, the team. So we hope that um, our ladies Nairobi will be a safe space to grow your network and our skills. We also hope that um, our, our ladies Nairobi will be a community dedicated to promote and improve gender diversity in the Nairobi R community and also for it to be an avenue to share your R skills with others. So again, as my fellow co-organizers mentioned, uh, this is um, a platform for everyone, not only ladies, only that uh, the trainers and organizers should be ladies or members of the minor minority groups. So all are welcome to share and um, participate. And also to mention is that um, based on the topics that uh, I highlighted, based on these topics uh, that you'd like to learn about, um, we are open to uh, getting trainers and um, trainers on any of these topics and we are feel free to reach out to us in case you'd be interested in training or teaching in any of these topics or any other topic that you're comfortable with. So yeah, that um, marks the end of the results of the pre-launch survey. And I will hand over to Faith Musili for the code of conduct. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Maggie, uh, for that. 
Um, so we're just going to spend a few minutes and uh, talk about the code of conduct. As we had mentioned that uh, we are under the umbrella of Lelis Global, which has been in existence for four years, over four years, uh, with a, a very big uh, network of chapters in different countries. So to really keep these uh, chapters, uh, you know, in line and also to the mission and the vision that was initially thought of, there is a code of conduct that we have to follow and our ladies in Nairobi will have to follow this code of conduct. It's very available online uh, on the link that is on your screen. Uh, so kindly, if you want, uh, kindly familiarize yourself with this. And these guidelines are just to help uh, the our ladies in Nairobi to really be a safe space for everyone and harassment free uh, experience. Um, so we will strictly uh, follow the code of conduct that is provided by the Our Ladies Global, and you, ca you can also check uh, the link. And Our Ladies uh, is committed to providing a harassment-free experience for everyone, and the harassment of participants in any form is not tolerated. So uh, this is just to make everyone feel safe and feel at home, and that no one uh, will, will feel harassed or doesn't feel like they're in a safe place. So there are different types of harassments. They have listed a lot of harassments uh, on the website, but uh, we're just going to mention a few. And the first one will be offensive comments related to gender, gender identity, expression, uh, sexual orientation, disability, mental illness, neurotypicality, physical appearance, body size, age, Every any any type of offensive comments kindly refrain from that, uh, so that uh, everyone feels comfortable and uh, in the right place and space. Um, so other harassments um, include just to continue with what uh, Faith has said, include unwelcome comments regarding a person's lifestyle choices and practices, including those related to food, health, parenting, drugs, and employment. We also have gratuitous or off-topic sexual images or behavior in spaces where they're not appropriate, threats of violence, incitement of violence towards any individual, including encouraging a person to commit suicide or to engage in self-harm. We also have um, deliberate intimidation, harassing photography or recording, including logging online activity for harassment purposes, continued one-on-one -on -one communication after requests to cease, deliberate outing of any aspect of a person's identity without their consent, except as necessary to protect vulnerable people from intentional abuse. And we also have a publication of non-harassing private communication. Okay, uh, thank you, Maggie and uh, Faith, and as well as Shelmet, also our speakers, our guests today. Thank you. Um, so for the code of conduct, the, the harassment that have been mentioned, the type of harassment that have been mentioned is basically to provide a, a, safe, space, a safe space, which is harassment free. And um, this, this code of conduct is applicable to both, our lady, to, to both online and offline. For the online is meetups, Twitter, uh, Slack, and mailing lists. And kindly note that anyone who violates any of this code of conduct may be sanctioned or expelled from these spaces uh, at the discussion of the global leadership team. So let's learn uh, the code of conduct. In case you, you will have any question, please reach out to us. The last slide will have our details. Yes, um, so this is the time where we give, uh, we, we, we want to hear your feedback. Yes, from, uh, from the participants. Um, kindly uh, put, a, put a text on the chat. Yeah, we will, we will, be, ha we will be happy to hear yeah, your feedback. Thank you. We have about three minutes. We may proceed with the feedback. So for the next, so what, are, what is the next step of this chapter? As Maggie has mentioned, we'll be having meetups every month. Uh, currently, we're having online meetups. So uh, those online meetups will be taking place every month. And these meetups will include, uh, we'll have talks, tutorials, hands-on workshops, and seminars. We even have uh, one, of the one of the participants has mentioned uh, that we can have uh, competitions so as to grow our skills so we'll be we'll, we are more than we are we are happy to hear your opinions and your views or or not to include on these meetups so this year's these years well we have at least four months remaining till the, the year ends yeah we'll share our calendar uh with, with you or kindly follow us on twitter and linkedin 
for more details and as well as meetup page. So our first, our, our second meetup, sorry, our second meetup will be on better manipulation in R and our trainer will be Naomi Nganga, who is a data analytics and visualization officer yeah at um yeah at red cross yeah uh we all we the the and the the meetup has already been made public as maggie has mentioned please visit our meetup page uh to see uh to register for the to register for the for the events thank you maggie the next slide yes uh so thank you very much for joining us and being with us here today so our email address is nairobi at rladies.org and you can find us also on LinkedIn or using rladies Nairobi uh, username and also on Twitter at rladies Nairobi and our meetup page. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, thank you all. Uh, I can see we have some feedback. Uh, Nashley, thank you so much for your feedback. Yeah, we also look forward to learning and uh, yeah, as as Maggie has mentioned, the the learning was the was the huge name <laughs> that was there. So clearly, we want to clearly we all want to learn and improve our skills. Yeah. Also, thank you, Mukundi, for the feedback. Yes. Uh, any other person who has a feedback? Yeah, we are. Thank you, thank you all for the feedback. Yes, Shalmit, I can see you are raising your hand. Please. Thank you. I wanted yeah. to I wanted to just encourage people. There are also conferences that have been happening. Okay, this year they've been virtual and a lot of um a lot of what? A lot of materials have been posted. So first of all, our studio comp has been happening every beginning of year for I don't know the last how many years. So if you just go to if you just type our studio comp on um Google you'll see a lot of presentations that have been done in the past and they're just amazing. People aren't always able to travel, but that does not mean that you, you can't watch, uh, you can't take part or you can't uh, be part of the presentation, albeit um, after it has been uploaded. I've been watching videos from 2018 and they've been good. And then also USR is in its final stages. USR is an annual conference that happens June, July. Also, um, the videos have been posted on YouTube through the R Consortium YouTube channel. So there are a lot of resources um, again on that channel. So just take your time and go through different uh, presentations. Uh, so please ask. Uh, uh, if you're not looking at the tab, there's so many answers that Webash and uh, Koloma has given to questions that have been raised uh, by Bansi and Chelsea. They are very; they have shared a lot of resources. So, simply uh, look at that. Uh, some of this information, and make sure to look at these channels. And also, I hope Bansi and uh, Chelsea, that your questions have really been answered. Okay, thank you, thank you, Faith, for that, and Shalmi. For the for the added words, uh, well, I think this is the time where we you may want you may want to to interact with uh, with any 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 of the member was joined. Yes, our meeting is set to end at one fifteen p.m. So we have about seven minutes. So if you have any other question that you you feel you want to ans ask, as well as any other any feedback that you have. Yeah, we will we'll be looking into them. Kindly go ahead. But I think um, I, uh, I think this is the part where we will say we are done. So anyone who wants to drop off can easily yes, yes. and quickly yeah. drop off. Um, but if you want to hang around and just have discussions, with, I don't think I don't know how long we are supposed to have discussions. Just 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 banter. Anyway, nothing much. We will call it happy, happy minute, not happy yeah. hour because it's going to be a lot of hours. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate this. And uh, please join our meetup uh, so that we can know when there's a new meetup is happening. Thank you. And tell more people about this. Thank you. 
Okay, bye. Uh, thank you, Faith, for that. Yes. Paloma and Vibash, thank you so much for sparing time and telling us very wise words, even as co-organizers, I think, and organizers, we have learned one or a lot, even one or two, <laughs> a lot I, as we start this journey. Yeah, we also we also look forward to working with, to working with your chapters, organizing events, yeah, and uh, uh, building our art skills. Yeah, so thank you very much, and we look forward to being with you the next time. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks for the invitation. It has been lovely to visit you. <laughs> I think Paloma, I'm going to send you a video of a tour through Nairobi yeah. and just today so that you can, <laughs> can please, <hear> please. <laughs> you, you need to send to meet you. I'll also have a visit to Nairobi. Oh, I will. I will. Oh, I can't wait for. I can't wait for a time when we'll be able to just see each other, all of us. You know, I was telling someone, uh, what's her name, Samantha. She's. I know you know Toyet. Um, a lady's, shall shall something close to that. Um, and I was telling her like I know people so much that when we meet physically, we'll be like, oh, nice to see you again. And I'm like, wait, this is the first time I'm actually seeing you physically. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I love the community. I, this community, um, is amazing. The support we are offering each other is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just awesome. Okay. I'm going to call, to drop the call at this point. Again, thank you so much, Paloma, Vibash, um, and Faith, Lucy, and Maggie. This has been amazing and I'm so excited we decided to do this and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Bye. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you too. Thank Have you. A Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.